Hello, good morning. Uh, today I will discuss to you the 11 critically endangered species in the Philippines, also the corresponding laws and the penalties. Uh, I hope you will get a uh, little bits of ideas and awareness in my blog. Shukran. So hello, good morning. Uh, today I will discuss to you the 11 critically endangered bird species of the Philippines. Uh, guys, don't mind my background huh? because I'm on the site right now making my vlog. <laughs> okay, now here we go. Uh, the number one in our list is still the red vented kukato or the kakatoa haimato gropigya. So this is the red vented kukato. Sometimes it's called by the various name like the Philippine kukato but it's famous by its name uh, it's Katala name, the Katala, the Abukay, Agay, or Kalangay. It is critically endangered species of Kukato uh, that is endemic to the Philippines, especially to the Palawan Islands. It is roughly the size and shape of the Tanimbar Corella. The Tanimbar Corella, also known as the Goffins Kukato. Maybe there are cousins. Later, I will show you the difference between the two species. But it is easily distinguished by the red feathers around the vent. This one, the red feathers. The plumage is all white with red undertail coverts, tip white, yellowish undertail, and pale yellow under wings. It is 12 inches or 30 centimeter long and has 8.6 inches wingspan. The red vented kokato, uh, it's quieter than the umbrella kokato and the molokan kokato. Unlike other kokatos, they are loud, loud birds. So this is our red vented kokato. See? And the uh, tanimbar corella or the goffins kokato. So the difference between the two is the, the red in the tail, this blue in the eye, the colors of the, what's this, it's legs, is that a leg? But the same, the size, the wingspan are the same. In the Philippines, there is the Katala Foundation located in the Palawan regions. Uh, this foundation is not only for uh, what is the katala, but also they cater another species like the freshwater turtle, the pangolin, the palawan pangolin, the tree bear, the mountain kalaw. I, I don't know what type of pheasant is this and what type of frog this one. So the next in our list is the Waldin's hornbill or Rhabdothorinus waldini. This is the Walden's Hornbill, locally called as the Dalungan, also known as the Visayan Wrinkled Hornbill, the Rufus Headed Hornbill, but it's not the Rufus Headed, the, the, I will show you later the Rufus. Uh, it is critically endangered species of Hornbill living in the rainforest of the island of Negros and Panay in, the, in my country. It is closely related to the rated hornbill. The rated hornbill is also known as the tagitik in our local dialect, but can be recognized by a yellow throat and ocular skin here in the male, and the double throat and the ocular skin in the female. Both sexes had a rated hornbill, and its binomial name commemorates the Scottish ornithologist Viscount Walden. Maybe I will discover some species of birds and I will call it Dondon's bird, like that. The third on our list is the Sulu hornbill, Anthracoceros montani. This is the Sulu hornbill. It's beautiful black with a white tail. Or Montani's hornbill. It is endemic to the island, uh, the Sulu archipelago in the Philippines and the island of Tawi-Tawi. Most of the birds, there are, there are many beautiful birds that can be found in the Sulu and the Tawi-Tawi area. Because Ta Sulu and Tawi-Tawi Tawi -Tawi area is in, near, in, near, in, near to Indonesia and Malaysia. It's in the Sambuanga Peninsula. 
The natural habitat is subtropical or the tropical moist mountain forest. It is threatened by the habitat loss as well as the potential harvesting of food. Its diet includes fruit, insects, and small lizards. In 2019, it was reported that only 27 matured individual hornbills are still believed to be alive in the wild. Imagine that only 27. We don't know the the age of the, that birds. We don't know the sexes of that birds. So it's definitely it's critically endangered. The number four in our list is the Cebu flowerpecker. The Cassium uh, quadricolor. It is endemic to the Cebu Islands in the Philippines. It is critically endangered breeding bird. It was feared to become extinct near in the 20th century after the clearance of the most island forest. But it was rediscovered in 1992 in a small patch of limestone forest in the central of Cebu, protected landscape, and has since been found in the three other sites, namely the Nugas Forest in Alcoy, Mount Lantoy in Argao and the Forest of the Lagit. Other possible sites in this species are in the Malabuyok. The current population of this estimated is to be between 85 to 105 only, remaining in the wild. So it's a very beautiful bird. The fifth in our list, of course, the mighty, the Philippine eagle, the Pitikopaga Jeffrey. The Philippine eagle is the national eagle, uh, the national bird, the national bird, uh, national animal in the Philippines, actually. It is also known as the monkey-eating eagle, the great Philippine eagle. It is endangered species of the, the family Asipitridae, which is endemic to the forest and the islands of the Philippines. Known as a brown colored plumage, a shaggy crest, and generally measures 86 to 102 centimeter. <coughs> the weight is 4.4 to 8 kilo. It can carry a little boy. How much more a monkey? Because there are some reports on this uh, Philippine eagle before that it it uh, carry boy, it uh, it hunt pigs. Of course, it's a huge bird. It is, it is considered the largest and the extant eagle in the world in terms of length and wingspan. Of course, with the stellar sea eagle and the harpy eagle being the larger in terms of weight and bulk, among the rarest of the most powerful birds in the world. It is critically endangered mainly to the massive loss of habitat resulting from deforestation in the most of its range. Killing a Philippine eagle is punishable under Philippine law up to 12 years in prison and heavy penalties. The Philippine eagle, one pair only will, this is, of course, this is eagle, this is a raptor, a territorial bird. The Philippine eagle, one pair of eagle is one range. Imagine one range, how big is one range. And the Philippine eagle, if I'm not mistaken, the Philippine eagle lay eggs every three years. So this this uh, magnificent bird of ours is definitely a subject to extinction. <clears throat> we have a conservation center located in I think in Kalinan, Davao. Our Philippine Eagle Foundation located in Davao. I went there for several times already, so better visit there uh, also. Number six in our list is the black hooded caucal, the Synthropus styri. This is the the picture. It is endemic to Mindoro in the Philippines. Its natural habitat is subtropical or tropical moist lowland forest. It is threatened again by habitat loss. Sometimes that was resulted in a small fragmented population declining fast as a consequence of its. Uh, it is now classified as the critically endangered by the IUCN. IUCN is the International Union uh, of Conservation for Nature. Continued pressure from mining, agriculture, and logging 
it is expected the result of complete destruction of all forests in Mindoro between 2020 and 2030. <coughs> Can you imagine that complete destruction in between 2020 and 2030? In order to combat extinction and local education programs have been initiated, service been executed, the ecotourism has been promoted in order to encourage local to take more sustainable occupations. Imagine that for, for 2020 up to 2030, that's only a 10 year span of time. The forest will be completely destruction, destroyed. The next is the, the Tawi Tawi Brown Dab, Patit. Uh, Papiteron sinirepsis. Sinirepsis? Why? It's very difficult to pronounce scientific names. So this is what is uh, the, the Tawi-Tawi brown dove. Of course, once again, it's endemic to the forest of Sulu, island of Tawi-Tawi and Sangasanga in the Philippines. Although it threatened by the habitat loss, the rate loss significantly reduced from 2004 to 2007. This is a good news. It is downlisted critically endangered to endangered status by 2007 by the IUCN. I don't know what is the update as of 2020. But it's very the news is very good to to recover to her that the, this species recovered the uh, slowly recovering their population. The next in our list is the Sulu Bleeding Heart, Galicumba Menage. The Bleeding Heart is easily identified to the red patch of the in, in their chest. <coughs> It is endemic once again in the island of Tawi-Tawi and its surrounding islets in the Philippines. Sulu Archipelago, the species is known only from two specimens collected in 90, uh, 1891. I don't think so that this data is correct because if this is 1891, where did they get this colored picture? Right? Okay. And has not been reduced uh, with uh, certainly since. Like other bleeding hearts, the Sulu bleeding heart is primarily, primarily sedentary, uh, sedentary bird, meaning it's a ground uh, bottom feeder and it only, only fly for a short distances. The surviving population would be very small, likely numbering fewer than 50 individuals surviving in the wild. And that was a long time ago. I don't know what, maybe, maybe today they are extinct would be threatened by habitat destruction and uncontrolled hunting. The next in our list is the Negros Bleeding Heart Pigeon. Of course, Bleeding Hearts, you can, as I've said, you can easily identify the Bleeding Hearts from the red patch on their chest. Galicumba Kiei. This is the picture of the Bleeding Heart. Thank you to Mr. Alan Pascua in providing this uh, beautiful photo. It is endemic to the Philippines. Where is previous? Previous. It is endemic to the Philippines where it's found in the islands of Negros and Panay. It is critically endangered, continuing the rate of the forest loss in the two islands. The two islands where it was occurred suggest it will continue to decline. The species is extremely small and severely uh, uh, fragmented population. The number 10 in our list is the Mindoro Bleeding Heart, the Galicolumba Platinea. Bleeding Heart, the, the picture is not so clear. It also co uh, called from the Mangyan tribe, the Kulukulu, also lesser known names as Lado. Manatad, Manok Manok, Punay, and Punyolada. So for those uh, Filipinos, Bisaya there, we, are, we, ha we have saying in, in our dialect that 
pas 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 manatad so you know guys this is the manatad this is the manatad and the manatad and the pune now i know that the manatad and the pune is the same the bird native to the philippines only found in the island of mindoro it is endangered species the mindoro bleeding heart is a type of ground dove the same with the previous dove that i mentioned the bleeding heart also it is threatened by the habitat loss and especially marble extraction So number 11 in our list is the Negros fruit dove, uh, Pete, Pelenopus arcanus. It is a very beautiful bird. I will show you. See the color, the fruit dove. It is endemic to the islands of Negros in the Philippines. The fruit, do the fruit dove is known as the, uh, from a single female specimen connected, uh, collected from the slope of Mount Kandaon. In the northern part of the island, well, it was found in, at high elevation. It is suspected that the species originally lived in lowland, lowland forest and has been driven to the higher elevation by habitat destruction. This is the sad thing. The original specimen was shot along with a bird suspected to be its mate from the fruiting tree. Nothing else is known about its behavior. The species has not been definitely reported since the original discovery in 1953. The several searches of Mount Kanlaon and surrounding forests have not discovered any sign of bird. Many believe that it is be extinct. But how did you get this colored picture again? This is not edited. Maybe this, uh, there's a uh, hope for this one. And here are some uh, additional. I did I, this birds are uh, the next is uh, the birds are included in the list of the DNR, but I don't know what is their pur uh, their purpose that they include this list because this list are uh, this kind of birds are not endemic to the Philippines. First, the Chinese crested term from that. From the name itself, the Chinese crested term or the Oriental crested term, the Talaseus burstini. This is the crested term. This is not endemic to the Philippines. But how, how, how it was included in the list of the DNR, we don't know. And I don't know the reason why. The next is the Saros crane, Antigone, Antigone. The Saros crane is a large non-migratory crane found in the parts of the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and Australia. So I did not include it in, in my 11 list because they are not endemic to the Philippines. So from the Philippines setting, maybe I will jump, we will, we will jump to the, to the global. Uh, uh, bef before that, this this is the the list from the DNR I I cut list of threatened wildlife and the categories critically endangered species. Number one is the Philippine cockatoo. Number two is the waldin. Number three is the Sulu hornbill. Next is the Cebu flower pecker, the Philippine eagle, the bla black hooded cowcal, the Chinese crested tern, and the Saros crane. I did not include in my, as I explained it before, the Tawi-Tawi Brown Dove, the Sulu Bleeding Heart, the Negros, the Mindoro Bleeding Hearts, and the Negros Fruit Dove. My source is the Administrative Order from the DNR 2004-15, establishing that the subject is establishing the list of terrestrial threatened species and their categories. And the list of other wild dove species pursuant to the Republic Act num number 9147, otherwise known as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act of 2001. As of now, my friends, this is the latest. Maybe they already renewed this one, but I searched in the internet. This is <coughs> the latest, the May 22, 2014 version. So this is the 9147. The Republic Act 9147, the Act of Providing the Conservation and Protection of Wildlife Resources and Their Habitats, 
appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. Again, in the section 8, possession of wildlife. No person or entity shall be allowed possession of wildlife unless such person or entity can prove financial and technical capability facility to maintain the said wildlife, provided that the source is not obtained in violation of this act. Now, for most of us breeders, uh, cage breeders in the Philippines, now we know that, of course, if you can provide, <coughs> once again, I will set example, uh, I think Mayor Sumiri have a good, Aviary, a big aviary also, and and Governor Chabit Singson. Governor Chabit Singson have a very huge zoo. So the penalty under the Republic Act 9147, the penalty depends not only on the act committed but also on the conservation status of the wildlife. The highest penalty imposed those guilty by killing critically endangered wildlife may be jailed term for 6 years and 1 day to 12 years and of payment ranging from 100,000 to 1 million peso. Now, this is the time. From local, I want to jump, a little bit jump to global. So this is the world population as of 1937. <coughs> From 1937, this is the world population, the carbon in atmosphere, the remaining wilderness. So in 1937, there's 2.3 billion people in the world. The carbon in the atmosphere in that time is 280 parts per million. The remaining wilderness on that time is 66%. From 1937 to 1954, this is the time when, when the World War I and the World War II exist. So by 1954, it became 2.7. And the uh, carbon in atmosphere, it became two, uh, 310. And the, the percentage in wilderness decreased by 2%. Imagine that, decreased by 2%. So when we arrive in the 1960s, our the world population is 3 billion. And it increased, the carbon in the atmosphere, it increased by, by 315. When the world population and the carbon in the atmosphere increases, the remaining in the wilderness decreases. So by that time, the remaining in the wilderness becomes 62%. In 1978, a year before I was born, it's already 4.3 billion and 3.35 and the, the remaining wilderness from 62, it drops to 55%. Can you imagine that? Can you think? Can you... Can you so now it be now 1997 1997 is 5.9 billion people in the world the 360 uh, parts per million the carbon in the atmosphere once again the remaining wilderness this is our data once again the world wilderness is dropped to 46 percent now Today, 2020, 7.8 billion people in the world. Carbon in the atmosphere is 415 and the remaining wilderness is 35%. Scientists projected by the year 2100, the population of the world will jump to 11 billion. And of course, the carbon in the atmosphere will increase the remaining wilderness will decrease. By this time, the, our nature, too much, ma many of our natural habitats will collapse by this time. My source of this one is the World Economic Forum uh, can, uh, presented by my idol, Mr. David Attenborough.
So it is not maybe in in in, in his lifetime. Imagine in his lifetime the drop <coughs> the drop of wilderness. Maybe my son will see a little bit percentage of wilderness, but my grandson sad to say, I think no. If we don't act today. So what is carbon in the atmosphere? Maybe, maybe world population, you can understand world population. Remaining wilderness, you can understand remaining in the wilderness. But carbon in the atmosphere. So what is the carbon? Why is carbon bad for the atmosphere? Greenhouse gases have far-ranging environmental and health effects. They cause climate change. By trapping the heat, they contribute also to respiratory diseases from smog and air pollution, extreme weather, food supply disruption, and increase of wildfires and other effects climate change caused by greenhouse gases. This is the, the, the color, the, the, the carbons, uh, carbon dioxide in our, in our planet as of 2011. I, that is... What is that? Nine years ago? And this record is from NOAA. The National Oceanic oh, what's it, NOAA? National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. <coughs> so it's very alarming. Uh, I hope you have you you, you have ideas you, you get a little bit of awareness of my of my blog once again thank you very much and see you in my other blogs Shukran so once again thank you very much for watching my my blog i hope you learn from it and it gives awareness for those who are birds uh, bird keepers uh salamat salamat shukran shukriya kulo na farad